Okay, I'm down in Fort Ransom in the state park at the Soon Farm. And it's kind of funny. You know, it's a, kind of a miserable day, uh, raining, but still a cool place. And there isn't a lot of this kind of thing going on. But that barn, I just happened to see on a plaque, that was a, one of these mail order barns where you, it was bought in 1914, came in pieces, each part numbered, and then you put the barn together. But that's cool, you know, <laughs> something like that <laughs> would be an incredible price nowadays. But it's a cool barn. You know, just a classical barn, but the fact, you know, it used to be you could get stuff like that through the Sears catalog. You could order buildings, houses, everything. Oh, this caught my eye. It's interesting in that it's a deluxe wind charger. And it has a tail that turns sideways, you know, to shut it off. Now, this I hadn't seen before. You know, I'm familiar with wind chargers, but they usually have a drum brake here to shut the thing down. This one, you just turn the tail. <laughs> okay, that's what they built a, a shed for a sawmill, you know, a big stationary one there, which was nice of them. That makes it kind of handy. You know, before we used to set that little sawmill up over here, but that big one, that works pretty nice. Except, you know, like my brother has got his, well, I'll show you when I get down here. He's got a little steam engine on the edger, and then they've got a big stationary motor running the saw. But I was gonna show you, <laughs> they end all their sawing. You know, the one year when I was down there, they built a little pig shed that sits back there. But last year, they were bragging that they built this fine outhouse. <laughs> I think she leaves a little bit to be desired. If you don't look, well, she's solid, <laughs> but she leaves a little bit lacking in the privacy department. Then you got cup holder, or book holder, but you ain't too weatherproof. Well, they do have some hay in, in the shed here that I imagine it'll be put up in the barn with that sling mechanism, because it has quit raining. But they must have picked this up before it got wet, and just in case, and bundles of what appears to be oats. Yeah, two wagon loads, so they're thinking on threshing. And this must be the one they're gonna use. Oh, another bundle wagon. Okay. <laughs> this is a school bus. Now, I remember my grandma had one sitting back in her trees, an old one, that my mom had actually went to school in. You know, it wouldn't hold a lot of people. But I know that's where Ma complained that in the back, to keep kids warm, you know, they had canvas over it, but in the back, they put one of them perfection heaters, kerosene heaters. Said so by the time you got to school, you got a headache from breathing that kerosene fumes. Must be a pack of lunch. Well, it looks like a 14T baler, which is what I use at home. <laughs> But I'll show you uh, a very interesting baler. And this is one I just got going last year. It's the old stationary balers. Where you're running off a motor and the thing doesn't move, it just sits there. You pitch hay into it and it packs it in and they really pack and then they're tied with wire. 
but they make a, a solid, solid bale. But they just got this one together last year because I know my brother had to do some welding on some parts on it. But that's good looking hay too. <laughs> And I don't know about this, i got to figure this out. <clears throat> They've got spacers between each bale. And I think it's slotted to get the wires through. And there lays the wires for tying. Because <clears throat> no knotter, you tie it by hand. You know, maybe... Warm up a little, maybe they'll go at her with this. I'd like to see that working. Ah, it can't be OSHA approved. A lot of moving parts flying around on that. They could take an arm off in a hurry. But you don't see a lot of these. Though uh, at Rolog, I know I saw one that we, they were using horses on a circle turn, you know, to run it, to power it. But this one, they run in a stationary motor on it. But, you know, heck of a contraption. And so old that you do not run across them anymore. You know, the old balers like that old John D. Baylor, them you run across. These, you don't, and the problem is a lot of times, this is all metal, so it's not bad, but a lot of times they had a lot of wood on them. And uh, the wood just rotted away. No, this is that little pig shed I was talking about that they made the other year. <laughs> they managed to move it over here, which is a little rough. But a pig would tear this thing apart so quick. You know, pigs are destructive. <laughs> They'd have the walls out of that in no time. It's quite a shanty. But it looks like they're getting ready to saw some wood. That's yeah, my brother's little Russell that they've got running onto the shaft here that goes over to the edger and it powers that just fine you know that you put a rough plank in it cuts both sides off makes it even but that other one the big engine there is running the sawmill which is a pretty big contraption but that motor there's a four-cylinder Avery, which I think it must burn kerosene, but they are extremely rare. But just runs like a top. You know, pretty cool, but... <laughs> yeah, nice, nice building, though, to put this in. Better than working outside, but... But that is quite, that Avery is quite a machine.
They're running that belt on the Avery so tight. You got to have an 80 John Deere holding her back <laughs> to keep tension on it. That's a heck of a motor, though. But that Edger, that's kind of an interesting deal. And we actually have one of them that came with that little saw that we bought. That we're going to have to get working on someday. But I think we're dealing with very green cottonwood. That is heavy stuff. But nice that you can cut two of them at once. But you can cut wood. Cooking sausages on top of the Russell. It runs at, on top of the boiler. It's about 300 degrees. So just cook a sausage. Must have hit or not. <laughs> 